Hello, I'm Louis Juarez. Thank you for joining us for the fourth annual Plein Air exhibition at the San Diego Watercolor Society online. Plein Air just means open air, painting outdoors, and the, and the nature that uh, God has given us. And I'd like to now introduce to you the president of the San Diego Watercolor Society, Terry Nelson. Good afternoon. My name is Terry Nelson, and I am president of the San Diego Watercolor Society. We are excited that you chose to zoom in to the reception of the fourth annual Plein Air exhibition. These artists have a special talent to bear weather conditions, to simplify a scene with their eyes, and to make it come alive in a few hours or less. I remember one time I was painting out at a horse ranch owned by friends of Lori Lynch. It was a knit cap, hot chocolate kind of day, and I was trying to capture a white stallion dancing around in a corral. When he finally stood still and I could draw him quickly, I realized that I did not leave enough room for the full length of his legs. Louis Juarez was standing next to me and he said, just add tall grass, no one will ever notice. So I did that and added purplish blue sky. And at feedback time, James Millard said, this is exciting. It reminds me of Henri Rousseau. Don't do another thing to it. Put a frame on it and enter it in a show. I did, and it was declined three times. The third time, when I was taking it out of the storage room, I asked Charles Rouse if he'd be so kind to give me feedback. The first thing he said was, the horse's legs are too short. I got a good laugh out of that, but I haven't given up plein air painting. I love connecting with nature and other artists. I shared this story because Charles Rouse is a signature artist many times over and yet he has confessed that plein air is not for him. So I want to congratulate the participants who showed up, believed in yourselves, and entered this show. Regardless of whether your work resonated with the juror or buyers, you are winners because you have captured a moment in time and place that you will never forget. I want to thank the vision and hard work of the Plan Air Committee chaired by Sarah Sullivan to bring us such a fresh show in a year of restrictions. We also are pleased to honor one of our best, June Maxian. So we hope you enjoy the reception. And now I'd like to highlight a, a special privilege to uh, recognize June Maxian, a longtime member of the San Diego Watercolor Society. Uh, June has uh, accomplished many uh, great works and presented them on a regular basis at the San Diego Watercolor Society for exhibition. And so the committee had determined that we wanted to recognize her works and her achievements and her incredible works of art in the California style as she has studied under artists of that movement and also now uh, presenting her works of exhibition in that style also. So look at this video uh, by uh, her son, Glenn and uh, Cindy, and as they, we all recognize this incredible artist of the San Diego Watercolor Society, June Maxian. My name is June Maxian, and I'm a, a plain air watercolor painter. At my birthday, I will be 92. I've been painting for at least 50, 60 years, and I hope to continue to do. I started painting when my children said to me, get a life. I ended up having a group of friends 
that painted that wanted to do the same thing. My dearest friends, we would meet once a month and we would bring paintings that either we were working on, we, we wanted to have someone's opinion of it. They were the people I was the closest to. We brought in our children, so it's the next generation of painters. I was raised an only child and these people that were in the critique group, I felt like I loved them like my sisters. My husband traveled and I was able to travel with him and the watercolors were the easiest for me to handle because I was allergic to oils. The watercolor was easy to take with me wherever I was going. I just needed a couple of brushes and, and the water was always there, so it was easy. The people that I've studied with, Rex Brandt and Bob Woods, they're long gone, but they were wonderful painters. Top was, I did that in Paris. I actually was standing on the other side of, this rip, of the river, which looked just like what I was looking at. I, I just put the Eiffel Tower in it because I wanted to be sure people knew where, I, where it was, but there, I, I did not see the Eiffel Tower from where I was standing. Okay, this was done here in Germany. I think that was one of my favorite places to paint. And my husband was there on business, and he used to say to people when they asked what we were doing there, he'd say that he, he came for the wine and I came for the scenery. They would see me painting there, and I then I was okay. Even though I didn't speak the language, I was accepted. And we did that for, for a number of years. So we would keep returning. I love to paint in San Diego because of the weather. The other places I like to paint, my favorite old town in San Diego, Spanish Village the Sunset Cliffs and Seaport Village, Botanical Garden. I don't like to go inside the, the garden, but from a distance with the pond and the reflections, it's a wonderful place to be. The Ho Hotel Coronado, I enjoy painting. I like to paint buildings that are unusual and that are different. And uh, La Jolla is, is got so many wonderful places to paint in. If you set up and paint, no one seems to bother you there because there's so many artists. Those are all places that I, I have set up and painted. We have the largest variety of trees in San Diego of any place in the world. Well, I think that if the painting is just for you and you're not trying to paint to please somebody, but it's just how you feel, I think that's the most important thing. And that'll come through when you've painted long enough to really forget. I could paint in the middle of Times Square and not even know there was anybody around me. I could lose myself in that way. I could do that. And that's why I was able to set up in places, like in China, people kind of come right up to you. They don't have a feeling of giving you any space. You know, they're right on top of you. And I could just ignore them and paint. I didn't always paint exactly what I saw. I painted more what I was feeling very, very quickly. I could capture it, and that was just from experience.
That's from just doing it for so many years. Also loving what I was doing and what I was seeing. That was important to me that I had a feeling about the place. And it would be, sometimes it would just be a window or just the way the light was hitting it. I would feel something for the place. I found that that was most successful for me was I had to have a connection with it, feel something about the play. And, and I couldn't if I didn't see it. So I didn't paint from sketches and I didn't paint from photographs. I just painted how I felt when I was there. And that seemed to come through on all of them. You can, you can do it and then do it again. And now I'd like to present the a slideshow of the entries uh, for the fourth annual exhibit, plein air exhibition. We have 92 entries and uh, five award winners, and uh, we are so uh, pleased uh, to present this video to you now.
And now I'd like to introduce the juror for the fourth annual Plein Air exhibition, Mr. Eric Rhodes, the publisher of Plein Air magazine, a, a blogger and author of art works and uh, just a connoisseur of fine arts. And we were very honored that he was uh, willing to uh, be the juror for this exhibition. And uh, so we'd like to present him and he's going to give a, a video of the, the award winners and a juror comments. Uh, Eric Rhodes with Plein Air Magazine and Fine Art Hot Connoisseur Magazine. Uh, I want to congratulate everybody. I looked at the awards and, um, I mean, the entries, and I thought there were some phenomenal people, a lot of really creative expression, and I want to give everybody a thumbs up and encourage everybody. It was a really hard choices. How do you narrow something like this down to five paintings? And it's very difficult, quite frankly. Uh, I've selected five. My, my picks are not necessarily going to be uh, what you might expect, but uh, that's how I do things. I've been spending a lot of time around watercolor lately because I'm uh, planning an event called Watercolor Live, which is uh, the world's top watercolor masters, and uh, we're going to be doing that in January, so I've been spending a lot of time with them and um, international artists, people from all over the world, and they've been on my show a lot lately at 12 noon on Facebook. And so anyway, watercolor is very much on my mind and I'm, I'm painting watercolor now as well. So I'm very interested in this. Um, the first selection, I don't know the names of the artists on these. I can't read the signatures in most cases. Uh, this one is image uh, 2941B. <laughs> and this is my first place. I thought this of all of them, I thought this told a great story. It was a story of uh, life at the marina, the beach, uh, I like the fact that it draws your eye into the distance. Uh, I thought it was excellent execution drawing of, of the boats or the vehicles, and it just overall really uh, pulled me in. I like the fact that it had some color where it really wanted my eye to go, which was the, uh, the booth with the little man or a little person in it. And anyway, I just thought it was really well executed, gr executed great perspective, and so on. So congratulations to the artist. Uh, the next image uh, that I selected is a bit of an unusual one, um, but I like it a lot. It's number 576A. And what I liked about it is it was, it, first off, it was a, a beautiful sense of abstractness. It, it had beautiful color harmony, and the colors really drew me in and really wanted me to, to really pay attention to this. And I, I thought, it, though it's a simple execution, uh, it it really you know really plays the light beautifully. It says that you know there's something off in the distance over this bridge that that I want to uh, I want to walk into, and it really drew me in. So I thought it was uh, really really interesting. And uh, congrats to the artist. I don't know uh, anything more about that one. The next one, uh, image number three, again beautiful execution. The old boat up in the hill. Uh, I thought, you know, the, seeing the, uh, the scene of it looks like San Diego in the distance and the bay and the boats, it just was very appropriately done, really beautiful atmospheric perspective. The temptation to not render everything perfectly like the tree in the corner, you know, it's kind of muted back and yet you, can, you know it's a tree. I just thought that, you know, the beautiful execution on the boat and the wires and the rigging and the figures and and it's a very simple execution, you know, lots of big shapes. I like the big shape of the, the sky water shape, the big shape of the grass and the angles of it. It draws me in and then the placement of the boat. I just thought it was really, really very effective. Congratulations to the artist. This one is one that uh, I think, you know, rarely would be noticed, but uh, because it's so... Um, so modern and so different and so abstract in its way. And I wanted this to be the fourth place. I thought it was really, really compelling. It reminded me of the great artist Rockwell Kent and something that he would do. It's just very, very simple. It draws the eye in. It's beautifully executed, executed really big shapes, and just something completely different than what we're accustomed to. And so that's fourth place. And uh, last, the honorable mention, I like this one. It's number 20, 
9121A, and it's just because it feels like a Japanese calligraphy, and it just goes to show that you can make a beautiful painting, beautiful execution with a very, very simple vignette of something as simple as the side of a rock wall. And I like the fact that they incorporated the, the rendering and the dripping and, the, and just the, the sense of color uh, was fascinating. It was delicate. It was not overly uh, saturated, and it just felt really good. So that's my honorable mention. I uh, want to thank you guys for allowing me to judge for you, and I hope that see, you'll see uh, to see you at uh, the Plein Air Convention or daily on Facebook at 12 noon, and certainly join us for Watercolor Live. You can find it at watercolorlive.com. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we, we're so thankful to all those who participated this year to make this uh, plein air exhibition a success. Thank you to the committee and to all of those who uh, worked just very hard through this very difficult year to uh, just to continue working and continue painting. Uh, just, uh, it's just so uh, wonderful that uh, we have many people that are volunteers at the San Diego Watercolor Society who give their time because they love art, they love uh, what they do, and that's what really makes it a success. So thank you very much, and God bless, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you next year.